In this video, we'll be looking at why energy management activities are inherently ad hoc and how can we put energy management into the active mind space of top management. If you look at the focus of our leaders and managers, their attention is primarily on getting products and services out the door and to the customers. Then they focus on cost control because ultimately these are issues that affect the profits and losses of the organization. Next on the agenda would be items that keep the business running for longer, the nice to haves and the longer term issues affecting the organization. As you can see, there are many things occupying the brains of top management. Energy is just one of the many items. For most organizations, the energy cost is approximately 2% to 10% of the total operating cost. As such, it is not surprising that top management spend little time on energy. However, good management and good governance matters. We have seen published papers where organization achieve 17% energy savings and having 4% productivity improvement. We've also seen companies achieving two to three times more benefit than its competition, or for the same amount of benefit, achieving them two to three times faster. So how do we pick it and keep the interest of top management? This is where good management systems model come in handy because 13% of us are naturally proficient in developing strategies. 11% are naturally proficient in executing them but only 8% are good in doing both. The implication is that 92% of us will do well having some guidance on developing good strategies and having some guidance on executing them well. So the textbook definition of a management system is an integrated set of processes and tools that a company used to develop its strategies, translate it into operational action, monitor and improve its effectiveness. In fact, for most of us, we do not call our management system a management system. They may be known as operating system, business excellence model, business re-engineering, integrated management, or a whole host of combinations. What is clear is that every organization have a management system. And it is onto this management system we need to embed energy management. To explain this, I'll use the concept of our body. In each of us, we have many systems and within each system, there are multiple organs. Now, one of these system is the body's natural management system. And this is the nervous system. It takes inputs from the various organs and the various system and send it to the brain for analysis. It takes the output from the brain and send them back down to the individual systems and organs so that the whole body can function as a coherent whole. Now within an organization, a management system is the glue that links plant strategy and its intended outcome through a concerted and deliberate set of action. And this action is about planning what we want to do do what we planned, check that we are doing as planned, and check that our plan can deliver its intended outcome. Then 
we take the appropriate action or corrections. Now, there are many different models to help us improve a management system. A common one is one of Robert Kaplan and David Norton, the balance scorecard and execution premium. Incidentally, ISO's management system is based on this model. There are also John Cottle's change management, Michael Hammer and James Chappie's business process re-engineering and process maturity model, management quality, beyond performance, business model generation, and ISO's high-level structure. For energy, this will be ISO 50001. And we have seen most organizations can achieve an energy intensity reduction of 2 to 3% versus a business as usual scenario of 1%. For companies new to energy management, savings during the first years can be in the range of 10 to 20%. In 2016, there are approximately 23,000 certified users for ISO 50001. 85% of them is in Europe, specifically in four countries. 10% is in Asia Pacific and the remaining 5% is spread out across the world. Now regardless of which model you choose, there are three elements that predictively determine how successful you are. And this is the technical analysis portion, the strategic alignment portion and the active management portion. If your energy management is based purely on technical analyses, then there are no buy-in from top management and middle management. It is not going anywhere. If your energy management is purely from the strategic perspective, then the projects that are being put in place may not be deliverable. It may not be achievable. If your energy management is based purely on active management, then what projects are you delivering? In fact, they may be in conflict with the strategic direction of the organization. Where the management models are trying to do is to nudge you into an area where all three coexist. So let's look at the technical analyses. There are five technical elements. The first one is business processes. You need to understand where you are consuming energy, how you are consuming it, and how is energy supplied to these various users. If you'd like to know more about business processes, please click on the link on the top right-hand corner or in the descriptions below. The next tool is about energy measurement. We need to have reliable and repeatable energy management and we'll use this to derive a good and informative energy performance indicator. We can then use this indicator to benchmark ourselves against the best available technology or benchmark it against our competition. This will tell us how fast and how much we need to do to catch up. The third tool is about determining what are the significant energy users because we really want to target our effort on the areas that is of statistical significance. Again, if you'd like to know more about this, please click on the link in the top right-hand corner or down in the description below. The fourth tool is an energy baseline, the relationship between energy consumption and the business activity of the organization. This will be the higher level of production or the level of service or perhaps a 
weather parameter. If you'd like to know more, again, click on the link at the top or in the descriptions below. The fifth technical tool is about having a prioritized list of improvement opportunities that are relevant to your organization, that is based on up-to-date data, that is cost-effective and deliverable. Now, once you've done all five of the analyses, you are then ready to go into the leadership and the managerial elements. The first one is about strategic fit. It is about aligning your energy projects and initiatives with the strategic intent and the strategic direction of the organization. Once you've got that alignment, you can then find that you have board approval in a much easier manner. The next step is about aligning the whole leadership team so that everyone is singing on the same hymn sheet. Everyone is doing energy savings. Everyone is measuring themselves on the same performance indicator. Then it's about engaging with our people to help accelerate and facilitate the delivery of the energy improvement projects. And it's also about creating a psychologically safe environment where our colleagues and our peers feel safe to voice out additional opportunities for improvements or areas of concern that we need to think about. The ninth tool is about managing the whole portfolio of initiatives. Because for each project, there are multiple stages to contend with and there are multiple stakeholders within each of the individual projects. So the project needs to be managed along the whole delivery cycle from concept to final evaluation. Then it's about celebrating our success. We need to be looking at what we've done well, celebrate those. We need to be looking at what we could do better in the future, collate those so that they can be passed on to the next phase where we review and repeat that cycle. Now, ISO standard 50001 organizes all this requirement in a closed loop circular manner so that the loop repeats itself. I'll encourage you to understand ISO 50001 and to identify how each of the requirement fits into your organizational practices. I hope you have a good overview of why energy management activities are ad hoc and how a good management systems model can overcome this. I also hope you have enjoyed the video. Please click on the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for updates and new videos. I'll see you in the next one.